Greetings and welcome to St. Michael's online worship on this third Sunday after Pentecost. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also with you. The Lord is our light and our life. Oh, oh come, come, let, let us, us worship. worship. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, that you have brought us together to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Tu mogun kulum kulum, kwezi pezulu, kono emtavi, kubantu, kosin kulum kulum, kon konshe wase zulwini, kuluise, soma. Si 
together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Christa hits a We come now to a time of penitence. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Almighty, Almighty God, God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you 
through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone, for the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins, and set you free from them. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray today's collect together. O O God God of freedom freedom and love, you you have set set us free in Jesus Christ. Make make us us servants of the gospel for the sake of your reign of love. love. Through Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, Spirit, one God, forever forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Let your hearts rejoice in the Lord, let your word proclaim his deeds, let your voice Sing out to the world that our God has come to save. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Listen to the word of God. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, beginning at verse 51. Glory to Christ our Saviour. As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem, and he sent messengers on ahead who went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him, because he was heading for Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. Then he and his disciples went to another village. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. He said to another man, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, No one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. I greet all our online worshippers in the name of our Saviour and hope you will find yourselves closer to the God we all worship and adore. There are two themes which we can pick up from today's readings. The first theme is that of a journey and the parallels to the Exodus can be drawn from the Old Testament book of Kings and also in our Gospel reading. In the first reading we see Elijah, knowing he was to leave the earth, travels to various places, possibly to say farewell to other prophets. He is followed by Elisha, his assistant, 
who refuses to leave him and follows him even through the parted river, and he witnesses Elijah's last minutes before he is taken up to the promised land of heaven in a whirlwind. Jesus is en route to Jerusalem, the place where the crucifixion, resurrection and ascension will happen. We see the little stories, the Samaritans who refuse hospitality, and the disciples who want to do as Elijah did and bring down fire to consume them. We see three people who want to follow Jesus, but are put off by what the journey will demand of them. To a lesser extent, the Galatians passage speaks rather more of the result of our spiritual journey and how walking alongside Christ will result in certain very positive fruits and not doing so will result in destructive lifestyles and a broken society. However, since we are past two weeks past Youth Day and one week past Father's Day, it seems appropriate to continue the theme and look rather at the growth, mentoring and sense of faith, passing on the faith that is present both overtly and by implications in these readings. It's a journey too, but rather a different one. We heard last week about Elijah and his emotional and spiritual crisis while on Mount Horeb and the still small voice of God who recognized Elijah's depression and exhaustion. God gives him Elisha to follow him as prophet. And in today's Gospel, we see this Elisha and quite a different man. Feisty in that he refuses to stay behind while Elijah goes around saying farewell to other prophets and refusing to leave him when he's about to be taken into heaven. And again we have an Exodus image. Elijah hits the Jordan River with his cloak and the waters pass and the two of them cross over on dry land as Moses did on the Red Sea. Elijah asks Elisha what he wants and Elisha asks for a double portion of your spirit. By this he means the Holy Spirit that has made Elijah the powerful prophet that he was. This sounds incredibly cheeky. But actually, in Jewish custom, when the father dies, and Elisha does call Elijah his father, the father's positions are divided up amongst the sons, but the oldest one always receives double portion. Elijah didn't promise Elisha anything, but told him to look out for a sign. And when Elijah had departed in the whirlwind, Elisha witnessed it, which was the sign he was given. And after the ritualistic tearing of clothes, he took Elijah's cloak and proceeded to strike the Jordan River in the same way. The river parted and Elisha's request was confirmed. In the Gospel, Jesus' interaction with his disciples indicates how far they are from where he wants them to be, and one wonders if he worries that they will ever be ready to carry his message after he's gone. Before today's reading, they are quarrelling about which of them is the most advanced in the kingdom of heaven. And when we see today how they want to call down fire upon the Samaritans who refuse them hospitality, Jesus refuses them. They are so very in this world and looking for power and influence and wanting to cancel those who oppose them. Then we have the three who want to follow Jesus. The first one who doesn't even comment when Jesus pointed out the rootless, homeless nature of his approach to ministry and discipleship, and this man simply disappears. The second one is a good boy. In Middle Eastern tradition, it is considered an honourable thing to look after parents until they have died. Now, honouring your parents is one of the Ten Commandments. Does that mean, but does that mean hanging around or near your home all the time and not fulfilling what God calls you to do because your parents will need you sometime in the next 20 years. And when the third would-be disciple wants to go and say goodbye to his family, he opens himself up to upsetting his mother who won't see him again and being persuaded by uncle to set himself up with a lot of money if he comes into his business for 10 years. Then he will have the freedom and security to be as religious as he likes. Jesus is not prepared to wait. Compare these to Elisha, who when Elijah told him to stay here, he refused and followed Elijah to the end. Compare this to the first disciples, who left their nets and followed Jesus. 
a very different attitude and one which Jesus still requires of us. If we look at the passage from Galatians, we all recognize the fruits of the Spirit. We tend to see them as a Google list of instructions, nine things you need to do to be spiritually mature. Instead, they are a test to see whether or not God's Spirit is within or not. But in, before that, speaking about the fruits of the flesh, Paul begins with the word freedom. That's a favorite word in modern South Africa, and there are many beleaguered teachers and parents whose attempt at curbing delinquency are foiled by the accusation that you are taking away my freedom. Looking at the list of the fruits of the lower nature, we can see the misuse of freedom in Christ. Rampant lustful sexuality, the impurity which means people have no regard and no sense of their own repentance and humility before God. Wantonness, that is to give way to any impulse that looks like fun, with no thought of the consequences or who is being hurt. Idolatry, worshipping our possessions. Witchcraft and later drunkenness, which in this context is akin to addiction. And we all have our can't say no to things. And then there's all the hostility and fighting and jealousy and divisions and total lack of control. We recognize all of it, and even sometimes in church, such attitudes feature. We could see this as well in the disciples and those who wanted to be disciples. In contrast to the fruits of the Spirit, we have all been fortunate enough to meet those people who are close to saintliness. We often can't remember what they said or what they did but the aura of holiness around them and the love emanating from them is something we never forget. And all the good fruits are evident in them, so we are never afraid of their knowing our worst faults. We are met with total accepting love, and we feel worm-like because we've let them down. Now how do we get there? Today's readings have one of the most important lessons. We get there by being totally dedicated to Jesus and absolutely single-minded about following him. We believe that Jesus' way is the only way and whatever we face day to day, we do it Jesus' way, whatever the cost. And boy, is there a cost. Ask any whistleblower, anyone who defends that human punch bag that everyone has a go at or anyone who refuses to fill in false expense claims, thus showing up the rest of the group. We believe that Jesus' way is the only way, and we love with patience, with kindness, with that objective objectivity which allows us to make the stern, tough love decisions, which hurt so much, but, but bring about the growth that is so desperately needed. And we believe that Jesus' way is the only way, and this allows us to see that whatever good we do, it is through the grace of a Saviour who loves us and who has accepted us and accepted any gift we choose to give. And we will never lose sight of the fact of our own littleness, which is only made effective because we have a Saviour who loves us unconditionally and respects us and our choices and all the time longs for our company and friendship more than we will ever long for His. Only in this way will the door of this world be open to him and his cleansing fire will sweep away the wickedness which we feel is so much part of our reality. But we go with people who don't want us to give to hospitality. We have no comfortable bed to sleep in at night, no caring parents to give us their wisdom for the journey and no friends to wish us well. Instead, like Elisha, we follow with everything we've got never take no for an answer, and ultimately we will witness God working in the most wonderful way, if not through us, then in spite of us. We are asked to put our hands to the plough and not look back. That is costly, but it is the only way to create the kingdom of heaven on earth. Amen. Let us affirm our faith as we say together, I believe, I believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We pray in confidence, knowing that we bring our prayers to a merciful and everlasting God. We pray today for your blessing to be upon this congregation of St. Michael's, upon this diocese and our sister churches across the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Eternal God, Light of the nations, in Christ you make all things new. Guide our nation during these times of political turmoil. Give us grace to rebuild bonds of trust and that together we may work for the dignity and flourishing of all people through Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray for the political leaders and activists and for all those who are working to shape our society. Let them be guided by the example of Jesus, putting understanding and compassion ahead of self-interest and material gain and working for a better world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for the young people in our families and communities. May they grow up knowing love and hope, valuing life and respecting others. Give them courage and resilience as they face changes in their lives and help them to see opportunities in all the challenges that stretch out before them. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for your healing touch to rest upon those who are sick at this time, your strength to be felt by those who are tired, your wisdom and love to encourage those who live with despair and fear. We think of the people we know who are suffering in mind or body and offer us personal prayers for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, through the ministry of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have freed us from the grip of the tomb. We pray for those who have departed this life and ask you, through your loving kindness, to have mercy on their souls. We pray too for those bereaved by their passing. Help them to draw comfort from the Holy Spirit and the fellowship of our church family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, may your presence be seen clearly in everything we do and say each day throughout the coming week. We pray that your joy and your love will flow freely in us and through us as we follow where you lead us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, Accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We now say a prayer over the offerings. 
God of beauty and bounty, we offer these gifts as tokens of our dedication and gratitude to you, God and Father of all. Where they are able, may they enrich the lives of those in need, and may they empower the work of, your minist of ministry for your kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Now the concluding prayer. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for the sacred time and space. Although we are apart, we are grateful for the opportunity to be joined with our brothers and sisters in worship. Above all, we give thanks for the opportunity to spend time in your presence. As we draw to a close, may your abiding peace remain in us throughout the week, and may we be guided by your will and your wisdom 
In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith. May you be rooted and grounded in love. May you grasp the full breadth and length and height and depth of the love of Christ. May you know that love that surpasses knowledge, and may you be filled with all the fullness of God and the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world to love and serve the Lord. In, In the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.